This is ACMI News, recognized nationwide as the first place winner of the 2022 Hometown Media Award for News Access. Celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day 2022, ACMI News covered three local events this week that encourage all of us to take a second look at our history. And for many of us, it's a chance for America to get much closer to the truth in order for all of us to move forward. As Arlington's International Film Festival gets ready for opening night, we preview a film that touches on a seven-decade struggle for women's rights. And even though the 19th Amendment was passed more than 100 years ago, the waiting game is still very much with us. And hey, there's a new kid in town. Nick Antonakis is ACMI's new sports director. He'll be covering AHS games throughout the school year. Want to meet him? Well, stay tuned. ACMI News starts right now. From McLennan Park to Spy Pond, from Poets Corner to the Mystic River, we have Arlington covered, giving you stories that count from people who care. Reliable, trustworthy, dependable. This is the 2022 nationwide award-winning ACMI News. Arlington and other municipalities statewide celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day this week and ACMI News has you covered with celebratory events that took place in Belmont, Winchester, and Newton. Hello, I'm James Milan. And I'm Summer Maxwell. Thanks for joining us. You may recall Joe Biden was the first president to issue a presidential proclamation for this special day, which pushes back on the idea that Christopher Columbus discovered America and shines a light on the atrocities committed against the native peoples as European settlers moved to this continent. Arlington residents had their choice of events celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day this year. We begin in Newton, where thousands of people gathered at Albemarle Field to see Native Americans representing the great tribal nations of the Caribbean all the way north to Canada. They told their story of profound resilience and survival, and even though they were denied their rightful place in many history books, they were there to set the record straight. We discovered uh, Columbus because we were home and Columbus was lost. Columbus was very lost and we knew exactly where we were. We were there for over 7,000 years so we knew where we were. The Taino people were the first ones that Columbus actually met on that faithful trip in 1492. He landed on our islands, we took you know, them in, and unfortunately because of that contact and everything else that happened afterwards, we started losing our culture and our language. And uh, historically, Tainos were written off as having gone extinct. It occurred uh, what our community calls a paper genocide, where they simply wrote us out of history books and they said they're long gone. But it's really important for us to reclaim this uh, holiday as our own because we need to let the world know that we're still here. Celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day gives all Americans ample space to educate themselves and in many cases re-educate themselves on a much deeper level as adults about the atrocities that have been committed against indigenous peoples throughout our U.S. history. History that was only touched upon and in many, many cases never even taught in our fourth grade history class. I only knew from my home when my parents told me that I was Taino, uh, but I was raised on the same stories. And honestly, there are people all over the Caribbean who still carry on those same stories because it's in the history books. But I think now, with the advent of technology, uh, more information that is accessible online, we can start rediscovering the truth. It's important because it allows us to have a different perspective. And maybe the history that we learned wasn't so much historical. It maybe was more of a story. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, we are proud of our Italian heritage and we want to continue to honor it, but we don't feel like Columbus needs to be the symbol when we know that his legacy does harm to Native peoples in this country and in this state. So what we're advocating for is um, changing Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, leaving Columbus behind and finding new ways to celebrate our Italian heritage on you know a different day. It cannot be something that coexists because you can't celebrate the perpetrator of genocide with the victims of genocide on the same day. Uh, of all the weapons that the Europeans brought, the, the strongest weapon was the pen. Because with a knife, uh, with a gun, they can kill us once. But with a the pen, they killed us over and over again, you know, by uh, declaring us extinct at, at, at different points. And we had, to, we had to write ourselves back into history, you know. So now as we learn more, we learn more of the truth, we learn different perspectives, and I think most importantly, we realize mm -hmm. that we are much closer than we realize, that we're not separate people. My tribal name is Pompagan Maquasham, Crawling Wolf in English. I've been blessed to have an opportunity to stand, have an opportunity to represent my tribe, represent my people, and we're trying to pass along a message that lets them know and the world know the indigenous people still exist, we still live. We still have our culture, our history, and our tradition, and it's time to, for it to be acknowledged and recognized. Well, and so a day like, to, like, to, like now, it means that people are waking up and that they're looking closer at the history and not letting someone else define what these things are for, for, for us or for themselves, and they're just looking into it. Like, all I've ever asked is, you know, to be fair, if you're going to celebrate that day, at least know what you're celebrating, you know? And, and once you read what happened, then you have to decide, well, what side of history are you on, you know? There's 21 states who have either declared Indigenous Peoples Day statewide as a holiday or in proclamation, and Massachusetts has not done that yet. So we're really hoping to make that happen um, across the state because we have a presence of Native peoples here and we can't continue to ignore them. How contradictory is it that this state doesn't have a statewide Indigenous Peoples Day, and yet Massachusetts... It's not a word from Ireland. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> in our state, there is a long history of violence. Um, you know, what a lot of folks know is King Philip's War. Um, these are issues that uh, we need to reflect on in a new perspective and really understand from today's, um, you know, perspective on what actually happened. And there's some great history available that we can learn about on that. And I think eventually understanding each other's perspective is what leads to unity. For us, the fact that we're here means that we survived, you know. Um, our existence is our resistance. A motion to make Indigenous Peoples Day a statewide holiday is already in the works. Supporters of the plan say they'll do what they can to refile their measure before the state legislative session begins in January. Meanwhile, Arlington's Human Rights Commission celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day this week by co-sponsoring a pair of local events in Winchester and Belmont. The Belmont celebration took place on October 9th at the Beach Street Center and featured the Eastern Suns drummers and dancers sharing their music as a way to keep alive the sacredness of sound that's been handed down through the ages. <laughs> Members of the Eastern Suns say this is an organic and ancient form of healing and sense of community. Then, on October 10th, Indigenous Day celebrations continued in Winchester with a family-friendly celebration at the Wright Lock Farm on Ridge Street. Visitors were treated to some storytelling of ancient peoples who inhabited North America long before Christopher Columbus was even born. It was an event that honored indigenous peoples and their sacred connection to art and, of course, the land. Our thanks to Rajiv Seneja of Arlington's Human Rights Commission for taking video of both the Belmont and Winchester events. In other news, Arlington is poised to get a $100,000 Green Communities Grant to continue reducing energy use in three town buildings. 
Arlington's Department of Planning and Community Development says the ACMI building on Park Ave, the attic area above Town Hall Auditorium, and the Brackett Elementary School will be getting energy upgrades, ranging from new air source heat pumps to insulation to LED lighting fixtures. Town leaders say nearly one-third of the town's match of $55,000 will be paid back in energy savings in the first year alone. Town manager Sandy Pooler says by applying cleaner ways to heat and cool our facilities, the town's on track to meet the goal of net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. The Green Communities Grant will cover roughly 52% of the $193,000 cost. If you're having a tough time meeting your rental or mortgage payments, the Town of Arlington is announcing the launch of the Arlington Housing Stability Program. It's a program that provides up to three months of rental and mortgage assistance to Arlington low- or middle-income households where the COVID crisis has put a damper on cash flow. The assistance program is funded through the town's allocation from the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, funds. All you have to do is go to the town website to see if you qualify. I recently spoke to Arlington Town Manager Sandy Pooler, who says if you do qualify, there is help. So under this program, um, it provides up to three months of rental or mortgage assistance to uh, Arlington households that have low or middle income and have been affected uh, by economic instability because of COVID. The application process is open now and it's on a rolling basis. Um, it is in multiple languages um, and um, the languages and the income requirements are listed on the town web page. So what I would encourage people who think they might be eligible or if they know of a neighbor who might need some help and might be eligible to go to the town's website uh, and look for the housing stability program uh, and make an application uh, because we do we do have a lot of federal money available to help people and uh, we want to use it that way. Additional information about the program is available on the town's website at arlingtonma.gov ARPA. The Arlington Housing Stability Program is accepting applications on a rolling basis through December 31st. Do you have any items collecting dust in your home that you don't use anymore? Many of us just toss the item away in the trash. But Arlington has a viable option, powered by volunteers. The Swap Shed at the town's Reuse and Recycling Center is gearing up for the fall-winter 2022 season. You can either drop something off or take something home. Either way, you're helping to keep perfectly working items out of the trash can, which ultimately wind up in some landfill. And you're giving something to another Arlington resident who will give your unwanted item a second life. Just a short trip down Ryder Street and past this gate, you'll come across Arlington Swap Shed at the town's reuse and recycling center. In these two trailers, you'll find everything from kitchenware to albums, CDs, DVDs, and anything else that would otherwise be wasting away in some cubbyhole. So the purpose of the swap shed is to keep uh, perfectly usable household items out of the trash. So we encourage Arlington residents to bring no longer needed items to the shed and uh, pick whatever they need. Anyone in Arlington who has items in good condition they wish to toss out can instead come here, drop their wares off for someone else to possibly use, and maybe, just maybe, find something that they wish to take home. A lot of our products are brand new, so some people uh, just never needed them. So they might as well just bring them here and uh, look around and find something that they, they need instead of going to, to the stores and uh, spending money on items that they can get here for free. During these very uncertain economic times, it's good to have one of these in town. First of all, everything you see here is free. No money changes hands whatsoever. And everyone who works here is a volunteer. And everything you see here is available to anyone who lives in the town of Arlington. Now, the term swap implies that you bring something in order to get something. That's not necessarily the case here. You can come here to the swap shed with absolutely nothing and leave here with a whole lot of something. You don't need to bring anything. Um, you can just come and see what you need and take it. Actually, this is my first time making a, a drop-off for something. I put a lot of things on the Arlington free list, really to get rid of things that I know have plenty of life, just not 
for me. I think it's a way for people to just keep using things uh, rather than dumping them. If you have something to drop off, a volunteer will first inspect your items, and depending on the needs of the community and space restrictions, your knickknack will find a prime spot right here with the hope of finding a new owner. There are needs everywhere, and so I think that's just valuable in any town. Um, people can come and get things that they need that otherwise wouldn't be used or collecting dust in someone's basement. And it's also a part of a green initiative, I would imagine. You're keeping a lot of things out of the trash. That's correct. So that was the whole idea of the initiative, to keep items out of the trash and uh, reuse them within the Arlington community. Arlington Swap Shed is proof that one person's perfectly working item is another's treasure. There's absolutely no risk. And as a result, it's a win-win for both the givers and the takers. For ACMI News, I'm Jeff Barnd. As you heard, the Swap Shed is an all-volunteer effort, which includes six adults, some Arlington High School students, and members of Scout Troop 306. To learn about the items the Shed is looking for and not looking for this time of year, just go to the town website, arlingtonma.gov. Again, that's arlingtonma.gov. There's a new school in town that focuses on young children and fosters a unique approach to a child's experiences in early life. The Montessori Children's House of Arlington is kicking off its inaugural school year at 6.30 Mass Ave. Inside, you'll find the infant and toddler classrooms, which are created to encourage children through hands-on discovery. The primary curriculum allows children of mixed ages to follow their passion and discover life at their own pace which in the opinion of the school's curriculum director, Gina Tizik, creates a path of meaningful learning and lifelong exploration. Well, Montessori education focuses on what's unique about young children. So our goal is to bring out their unique personality, to help them educationally, and also learn how to be an individual within a community. So it's a lot of community work and it's a lot of personal development that happens between birth and six years old. We're focusing on toddler and preschool children. So we start at 15 months and we go to age six. Because the idea is, is that we're helping to bring out the best in the child, so the blossoming of the flower. Um, where in traditional education, the teacher is imparting knowledge. In Montessori, children are discovering. They're discovering what they are interested in and that moves them forward. So we're always looking for what is the child interested in because you're always going to learn more when you're interested in something. And then we pull those academic ideas into what they're interested in. So a child is interested in motorcycles, for example, we're doing motorcycle matchings to refine their eye, to refine their ideas about what are the differences here. So when they start reading or doing math, they're able to do that. We have openings in toddler and preschool. We're here to serve the Arlington community. We want to build a community within the community here. And um, we're having an open house on November 3rd and November 5th um, that will be posted on our Facebook page and also on our website. If you wish to learn more about the Montessori Children's House of Arlington at 630 Max, Mass Ave, as you just heard, go to their website, arlingtonchildrenshouse.org, or give them a call at 857-203-2171. Again, that's 857-203-2171. The Arlington International Film Festival is back and less than a month away. This year, the opening night program is entitled Honoring the Strength of Woman. AIFF will be featuring two films that show the extraordinary drive and resilience of women from around the world. Here now is a preview of one of the films, how Long Must We Wait, a film that showcases the hardships women had to endure just to attain the right to vote. It's a fight for equality that continues to this day.
the women were subjected to all kinds of indignities. There was this feeling among the women that they might be personally attacked, that they might be raped even by these out of control guards and the women were terrified. Don't miss the Arlington International Film Festival at the Capitol Theater Thursday, November 3rd, 2022 through Sunday, November 6th. For more information, just go to their website, aiffest.org. Again, that's aiffest.org. And keeping with the theme of theater performances, it's hard to believe, but John Lennon would be celebrating birthday number 82 this week. And on his birthday, October 9th, the Regent Theater staged an event called John Lennon, A Day in His Life, featuring Breakfast with the Beatles host, Chachi LaPrette, and Beatles archivist, Eric Taros. The show did not disappoint, and a splendid time was guaranteed for all. We see the people come in for these shows and, you know, it's parents with their children, grandparents with their grandchildren, and, and that's great, you know, because it's, it's not, it, it's just telling. It tells you that the music is going to really last forever. As long as we're around or as long humans are around, the Beatles will be around. Today is going to be, tonight's show is going to be really extraordinary. I think 99.9% .9 of the films tonight have, have never been shown in this theater, so it's going to be all new stuff. And it's going to be covering all kinds of aspects of the life of John Lennon, the founding member of the Beatles. Without John, there would be no Beatles, I would suggest. Absolutely, no question. It is a very special day. It's, uh, it's bittersweet. Uh, the greatest voice in rock and roll, I've said that many, many times over, the founding member of the Beatles, taken from us in a, such a devastating, tragic way. Unfair, should never have happened, and that's why his birthdays are so important, because what if he was here today? What if he was introduced to social media? When he, when he was murdered, he didn't know what CDs were. Social media, the way the world is today, the wars going on over in Ukraine, uh, women's rights not happening, being deflated and taken away. This is why we need John Lennon in our life. I sit on a very large archive of stuff. I stand on the shoulders of giants. Many of the great early collectors informed me, uh, coddled me, mentored me, and gave me lots and lots and lots of stuff. So what was really unusual about this particular show was in preparing for it, I kept finding John talking about things like as an intro to each song we're gonna play, but it's like he recorded it yesterday. Interestingly enough, some conservative politicians seem to be more concerned for the Indians than uh, some liberal politicians, Maybe they've realized how many there are on the whole I mean, like, American continent, including the South. How many People think there's only there? a few Indians left. There's millions of them in the whole continent of America, which includes South America. And one day they're going to be asking for their rights. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they weren't standing next to the black people, too. Yeah. So it's either give now or die later, I reckon. Think of him like <clears throat> Kool-Aid smashing down the wall, you know? <laughs> like he came through, especially with the Beatles, he pushed that band through, like he said, 
John to me feels like the battering ram that like just knocked that right through. And you can feel that energy when you listen to the music now. Whenever I play a John Lennon song, I feel him like enter me. Like you can't play that music and just, you know, you've got to emotionally embody it. And in that, and even hearing this song right now, <laughs> it's making me want to cry. He's still top of mind with us and he's loved dearly. So God bless him and up there in heaven, John Lennon, we love you. And the hits just keep on coming at The Regent. On Wednesday, October 19th, The Regent will feature an evening with Ram Das and Friends, an exclusive celebration featuring the film Dying to Know, Ram Das and Timothy Leary, with filmmaker Gay Dillingham. Ram Das was a Harvard psychologist and psychedelic pioneer forever linked to Dr. Timothy Leary, and his spirit has been a guiding light for three generations now helping millions to free themselves from their bonds as Das worked through his own. There will also be a book signing with Mirabai Bush, co-author with Das of Walking Each Other Home, a Ram Das memorabilia exhibit, and a panel discussion. For more information, just go to the Regent website, Regent Theater, that's theater with R-E, dot com. ACMI is proud to announce that we have a new sports director, and his name may ring a bell. Nick Antonakis has been with ACMI on and off for a few years now. He delivered the sportscasts right here on ACMI News, just as the pandemic reared its ugly head, and he did a phenomenal job. And he's back, announcing, producing, and directing our all-important sports coverage. ACMI News Director Jeff Barnes sat down with Nick in our new and seriously upgraded sports booth at Arlington High School. It's definitely, you know, it's good to be back for sure. Um, definitely in a more involved standpoint this year. Um, it, it brings me back to high school a bit, but also now being from a different point of view, you know, it's, it's, it's just good to add my perspective to what's going on here at ACMI. Well, so far, it's been great to get everybody back here in person, which is a, obviously a big thing coming off of COVID. But we have this new setup going here in the gym. We've been moving around a little bit from studio to studio, but now we finally set up a new Studio B outside the high school. And then we have this sports center set up here, set up in the red gym of the high school. So we're hoping to do a lot more things in the future with this. This new technology that we have going, it really makes it feel like the real thing, a very professional environment. That's something you would see kind of at like the top sport professional levels. And for the Patriots or the Bruins, something like that. So having this technology here available now for students to access as well as us here, um, working on sports productions and stuff, it's definitely a huge improvement. We have a lot of things planned for the winter, hopefully, you know, pushing forward and making better shows and doing better things and helping bring up kids along with it and give them that experience uh, to, you know, learn how to be in this field and hopefully get jobs in it one day too, which I'm aspiring to do as one day as well. This is definitely the place to be. I was so lucky to have this opportunity back in high school and get involved in ACMI this way. It helped me get to the point where I am today. So I would definitely recommend it to anybody who's interested in sports or TV in any fashion. Contact us. We'll be happy to get you involved. You don't need any experience or anything. Just join us. We'll teach you everything you need to know. All right. Well, Nick, welcome, man. Welcome aboard. Appreciate it. Thank it's good you. to have you, buddy. Good to talk to you. And we are lucky and very proud that Nick is now on board to cover what is sure to be an exciting season at Arlington High School. Nick is just a natural. The next Vin Scully, John Madden, Johnny Most, you can bet on it. And that'll do it for this week's edition of ACMI News. Thanks a lot for joining us. I'm James Milan. And I'm Summer Maxwell. Have a great week, everyone. We will see you next week. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll find us at youtube.com slash ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us or wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by ACMI Studio A at 85 Park Avenue.